Howdy, my name is Charles Anderson. I'm one of the Nash Jazz interns this year. This is my second year in the program, uh, and also my final year at Arizona State University, focusing on jazz guitar. Uh, today, I'm going to run through some of the Arizona All-State Jazz Audition Etudes for the guitar. <laughs> There are three things that I want to talk about with the first etude. Uh, the first thing is finding a place to play it on your guitar. Uh, the range of the etude is just over an octave at times, which is really great for playing positionally on the neck. Uh, I found a spot right around the fifth fret where I could manage all the notes without having to move my hand around very much. The second part I actually wanted to talk about was building it up to the tempo that's marked on the page. Uh, it's important when you're working on this etude to make sure your right hand or your picking hand is relaxed while you're playing it at the slow tempos and also while you're playing it at the fast tempos because if you start getting bogged down because you have a tight right hand uh, you're not going to be able to play it as effectively. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was the the bar lines where there is a tie over the measure. There are a couple of phrases in the etude uh, where it can get really easy, it can be really easy to just uh, ignore those particular spots. So let's talk about them. At the end of the very first measure, our pickup measure, there is a an eighth note tying into a dotted quarter note. It's just work up that tempo, I guess. The other spot that I wanted to talk about that kept getting me when I was building this tempo up was at the end of the third system, moving into the very last measure of that uh, line. There is uh, two tied eighth notes uh, that ended up throwing off my practicing. So uh, I had to slow it down and work through those spots. In the second etude, this is a pretty classic example, at least to me, of a, a of Freddie Green style comping, like you would hear in a Count Basie style big band, uh, which is going to be a lot of quarter notes for the guitar player. Uh, that being said, it's important to be able to control your quarter note. So I want to talk about two aspects. Uh, one is actually placing it where you want in time. The way to work on this is to set your metronome to whatever tempo and practice playing your chords before the actual beat of the metronome and then after the actual beat of the metronome and then trying to play it exactly on. If you have this control over time, it's going to be really helpful when you get into the big band setting uh, and you have to comp this way. You'll have the control to be able to hear like, oh, before and after the beat. Uh, another aspect of that is going to be the actual guitar technique of playing this way. Uh, when you play, you will uh, have your hand, your fretting hand, down on the guitar fretboard, uh, and in between every stroke of your pick, you will relax your left hand in order to get a nice round cutoff uh, for each of your beats. And depending on how quickly or slowly you control this cutoff, you have a really uh, intuitive way to control the length of your notes without having to mute it with your right hand. The muting should come from your left hand. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was some range issues. There's some pretty common major nine voice uh, that this etude starts with uh, that are going to be kind of tough to play in a way that sounds good. Uh, so find a voicing closer to the middle of the guitar neck. Many guitars are actually intonated where the middle five frets or so are going to be the most in tune. Uh, so if you can find a nice like drop three voicing in the middle of your guitar for those B flat nine chords, those are going to be really uh, effective. And then 
try not to get bogged down with a lot of the extensions. Grab the ones that you can, uh, but ultimately, like the guitar is not the one that's responsible for making all of those extensions happen in this style of chart. <laughs> Samba Etude 3. Etude 3 is the Samba. The one thing that I wanted to talk about on this tune is making sure you have a strategy for navigating between pick style uh, or finger style playing. So uh, I ended up playing a lot with my thumb for the octaves, uh, and I also ended up playing a lot with just my fingertips uh, for the chordal sections, uh, and making sure that you have a convenient path across the fretboard uh, to make those happen in time. So. Uh, when you're playing the octaves, it, you'll have more control uh, with your thumb than you would have with a pick or even with uh, like thumb and index finger. Uh, and then you'll again have more control over what you're actually playing when you play finger style for the, for the chordal sections as well. So, uh, Etude 4 is the straight 16th funk etude. Uh, there's going to be two spots uh, that are challenging. Um, for me, the actual playing of the syncopated uh, 16th notes, and of course I have my pick on the floor, so you can see to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Uh, the challenging part for me was playing the syncopated 16th note phrase in the middle of the etude uh, with any degree of control. That was that was difficult for me. So uh, I started playing by playing just muted sixteenth notes uh, in time until I could get it to a point where I'd have some control. And just making sure and, and not really even playing what's uh, in the etude. I wanted to have the control to be able to put uh, these hits anywhere in the 16th note phrase. Uh, and then I interpreted it off the page. So uh, I have to look at it now, which is great. There it is, OK. Uh, and then I, I started really slow with it until I was able to build it up to about uh, 100 BPM. So. so on and so forth, and I did that uh, until my neighbors were mad. Uh, then I wanted to show just two voicings at the end of this etude, uh, which are the G7, 13, sharp, 9. I'm not playing all of the notes in the chord, I'm just playing most of them. I'm not playing the root in my voicing, I'm playing these three notes, which will be uh, F and B and E and A sharp. And then for the C13, sharp 9, which I believe is right after it, yep, uh, for the C13, sharp 9, I'm just moving that whole structure down a half step, and that gets me all of the, the, the right notes as well. Uh, and you can do that as well up for the F that the song ends on. <laughs> 